Yo, what's up guys? Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. Welcome back to Sonic Academy. Today we're checking out a brand new plugin from Minimal Audio. In fact, two plugins. One's free and totally worth grabbing. It's called Rift Filter Light. And then Rift, of course, their flagship product. We're gonna be checking that out today. Let's dive in, we're gonna take a look. Right, so this is uh, the filter light. This is the free version of Rift, and it's basically the filter section from the full plugin. It's got a really nice selection of filters uh, from the sort of basic stuff that you expect to be in a thing like this to the morphing filters. I really like the vowel filters in this one. You can see you can morph between them. They're state variable filters. Um, this one sounds great. You can offset the spread of the left and right as well, which gives you some really nice um, uh, stereo effects, uh, as well as this handy little feature to either link to MIDI or uh, your frequency or tuning. So you can actually tune your filter to specific notes. Uh, for example, if we use a basic like that, we can tune that resonant bump. But we are checking out the star of the show, which is the full version of Rift from Minimal Audio. Now this is a distortion slash filter slash delay plugin uh, with some pretty cool modulation. De seeing as we're dealing with the distortion, we've got a little 303-esque riff from Anna loaded up here. That's what we're gonna be working with. And let's take a look at Rift. So we're just gonna have the user default loaded. So this is the screen that you greeted with uh, upon opening up Rift. And it's a fairly interesting premise with regards to the distortion. So you've got various different algorithms. If you click here on the left-hand side, you've got wave shaping algorithms, wave folding algorithms, noise, bit depth, and some sample rate um, reduction uh, algorithms as well. Um, the interesting thing with this is that you can select a different algorithm for either the positive or the negative part of your waveform. Um, so anything with a negative amplitude will be shaped by whatever you select here. So let's go with teeth, for example. And you'll see there's not much of a change yet, but that's kind of what it's going to be doing to your waveform. And then we can choose a completely different one here. Let's go with the noise. Let's go with ghost and we'll just see what that does. Um... So let's play some, something back and take a listen. We'll drive up our ghost noise algorithm that we have here. And then we can dial in the wave folding uh, algorithm as well. Cool. So we just flicked through some of those different algorithms there. Now you can also uh, adjust the amount of drive that you're pushing through those algorithms in this top section here. So we've got a multi-stage distortion. Uh, you can go all the way up to six to sta six stages of distortion. <laughs> You can control the amount of drive, yeah? You can also multiply that. If you really want to crush the hell out of something um, and destroy it completely. And now, interestingly, you can also blend between the two different algorithms here. So we've got our plexus and the quantizer. If we... So if we use that, we can enforce the quantizer onto the negative side of the wave and vice versa. If we bring that all the way up, we will move the plexus wa uh, wave folder onto the positive side as well. Cool. And of course, all of this can be automated as well with um, modulation, which we're going to take a look at now. So uh, we've also got a dry wet over here in case you want to blend some of that distortion back into the original sound. So let's get, uh, I'm going to grab a different distortion. We'll go something like growl. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Just find a distortion we're happy with. That'll do. Um, so you'll notice down at the bottom here, we've got uh, some different controls as well. If we flick into this one, you're going to get the other page, which houses all of the filtering and uh, delay options as well. It's labeled feedback here. Yeah? You have two different modes that this can run in. You've also still got control of all of your uh, distortion uh, settings here. I'm not 100% sure what the value of being in this mode is actually besides the uh, larger display for the wave folding. Um, I guess that's about it really. Uh, you can't really see the wave folding shapes in that view. Uh, but never, nevertheless, uh, let's take a look at some of the other options here. So we've looked at the um, distortion settings. Let's play around with some of the filtering options and the delay. We'll bring in the filter first. Uh, so like pretty much the same filter that we had a look at in the free version. It's just that it's the same module. Um, however, this time around, we can add some modulation sources to this as well. So let's check this out. We are post filtering right now. What I like about this is we can actually push this before the distortion phase. So we can really kind of drive resonance into that distortion now and take a listen. Let's play around with the spread a little bit. And that parameter is screaming for some modulation. So let's get that done. Uh, we'll just hop, hop over to our LFO. And you've got two curves as well. The curves can act as pretty much as LFOs as well. Uh, in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to use a curve for this first. And let's do a fairly fast one. And we'll assign that to the spread. You just click and drag onto the spread. And you can dial this up. Notice that this is only going one way right now. If we just right click on there, we can set bipolar. And let's take a listen now. That's pretty cool. Let's get some um, modulation happening on the actual filter cutoff as well. This one I'm going to use the LFO for because it's got a really nice little um, feature here, this randomize amount, which I really like for kind of modulating filter curves like you would playing it live almost um, quite randomly so let's uh let's assign this to our cutoff here we'll bring our cutoff down we can leave this one in unipolar mode so we'll do this and let's dial up the randomization so check what happens to the at four percent well let me move it up to about ten percent and see every time it completes a cycle it's redrawing the LFO shape. Now, these are not making a massive difference like this right now. Let's actually turn off the sync. We'll just do this. Uh, let's uh, turn this up to about 50%, for example. Take a look at what happens now. It's kind of redrawing these LFOs every time it completes that cycle. And it's done in quite a nice organic way. I like the fact that it's uh, smoothed out like this. Of course, we can change the shape and get sort of SNH kind of style modulation. You'd have to dial this up quite fast to get that. There we go. But let's bring that back down to our smooth wave, wave shape there. And take a listen to what we've got now. Cool, let's take a look at our delay section here, or the feedback section as it's labeled here. Uh, so by default, this is set to tuned, uh, which is going to give you comb filtering and sort of tuned micro delays. So take a listen to what this does. We can set our frequency, let's tune it actually to A, which is what this is in. Let's 
Let's set that to a comb filter as well. Cool. And then we've also got the more sort of standard delays. We can go with a dotted amount here. And let's keep that synced. We can actually distort the feedback as well. And let's just take a listen to what happens if we run the filter from Anna's side as well. Cool. That pretty much covers most of the controls here. Uh, we've also got an envelope follower as well, which can be assigned to various different parameters, much in the same way. I wanted to just point out this as well. Um, when you assign, let's say, this curve to, let's assign it to our blend, for example. Uh, a cool little thing that you can do with these is actually add a depth mod to this as well. Uh, so we could use curve two, this one here, and you'll see it now has this little purple ring inside of the other one. So we can use this one to actually change the amount of modulation being added by the green one. So let's just slow this one right down. Now you can see the modulation. We'll just speed this up so you can see it a little bit easier. You can see the modulation from curve one is only being applied partially when curve two is all the way down here. And as it comes back up again, See, it will reduce the amount. If you want to change the amount of modulation for curve one again, you have to hold down the shift key and then you can adjust that modulation like so. It's a really nice little feature that you can just kind of layer modulation on top of modulation. You can, of course, add a second layer to this too and even the follower as well, uh, as many as you want. And then you can add depth modulations for each of these two. So let's go for that and... We can then add a macro as well, which would be down here, to control the depth of one of those as well. So pretty pretty flexible modulation system. I really like it a lot. Um, and pretty flexible little distortion units. And this is not really a saturator as such. It's not going to be a warm distortion. This is really going to be something for slamming your drums, um, acid lines, really kind of... Uh, destroying audio with us, and it's it's a great little fun tool to work with. Cool, so that is a Minimal Audio's Rift. It's out now, you can go check this one out. A pretty cool distortion, I really like this a lot, uh, especially the modulation on it as well. Really, really nice. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned, Sonic Academy, I'll be back shortly with more content for you guys. Till then, take care, see you soon. Thanks everyone for watching, we really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video then smash a like and if you want to be notified about new videos hit the subscribe and notification buttons. PEACE!